angle of attack is a function of five things. That is, there are five factors that determine what an airplane or, an, or a wing section's angle of attack is going to be. Angle of attack is defined as the angle between the cord of the wing and the remote relative airflow. So the, we have an airfoil section here. The cord is represented by the uh, red line. It's a straight line drawn from the apex of the leading edge to the apex of the trailing edge. And it's used as a reference line. Extending that out, uh, the relative airflow represented by the green arrow. And the angle of attack then is the uh, angle between the uh, cord line and the remote relative air, air stream. The remote relative airstream is opposite uh, the path of the wing. The wing, the air is stationary, the wing is moving through the air, and the relative airflow is opposite the path that the wing is taking. In this case, the wing is traveling opposite, opposite the green arrow, so the wing is traveling level and it's traveling that direction, only exactly opposite the green arrow. Now, easy to confuse that <coughs> with uh, the uh, at pitch attitude of the airplane, and it's not one and the same, although it's related. So the remote relative airflow is opposite the path of the wing. In this case, the wing is going uh, right to left, and it's horizontal. Uh, the, the big purple line represents level. So this airplane would be flying level with a specific angle of attack. That is, it would not be changing altitude. In the next example, uh, this airplane is traveling uh, on a descending flight path opposite the direction of the green arrow. Uh, it's descending because the big purple line represents level. So the flight path, the airplane is actually descending, but the angle of attack is the same as the top diagram. In the top diagram the airplane would appear level. In the bottom diagram the airplane would appear nose down. In both cases the angle of attack is the same. And then in the middle diagram uh, the aircraft would be it would appear nose high. It is climbing the flight path is opposite the green arrow, so it is getting higher above the ground. The purple is again represents level, but in all three diagrams the wing has the same angle of attack. So the airplane in this diagram would appear level, in this diagram would appear nose down and descending, and in this diagram would appear nose up and climbing. But in all three cases, angle of attack is the same. So it's important to establish the difference between what would be the appearance of the pitch attitude of the airplane and uh, the angle of attack. They are different and cannot be confused. Okay. Now, for the five factors of angle of attack. Angle of attack is a function of five things. That is, if when these things change, the angle of attack changes. So the first one is speed. In order for an airplane to be in equilibrium, and that's the uh, assumption here that the airplane is in a steady state flight that is in equilibrium, uh, lift is equal to weight. Weight uh, is equal to lift, and of course thrust is equal to drag. As the airplane, as the speed decreases, we still have to generate the same amount of lift. So in order to do that, the angle of attack, if we're going to change, make that change with angle of attack, angle of attack has to increase. So as we decrease speed, angle of attack increases. 
as we increase speed, angle of attack decreases in order to maintain the same lift. The next one is air density. As the air, if the air becomes less dense, angle of attack must increase because the wing has less air to work with, less fewer molecules of air to work with, therefore in order to generate the same amount of lift, angle of attack has to increase. And as air becomes a more dense, angle of attack decreases. So what this really means is as you climb to altitude, the higher you go, the less dense the air, and all other of the factors remaining the same, as you climb and go to altitude, uh, angle of attack gets larger and larger and larger. So and there actually comes a point, if, you're cap if you have an airplane that's capable of, of going to altitude, uh, you will wind up calculating the maximum altitude that you can fly that airplane on that day. Uh, because if you try to go higher than that, you, you risk stall, or if you go too much higher than that, it will stall. The higher you go, the higher the angle of attack, or the less dense the air, the higher the angle of attack. The next one is weight. Uh, the more the airplane weighs, the more weight, the, the more lift the wing has to generate. To generate more lift, angle of attack goes up. So we don't very often pick up weight in flight, although we could if we picked up a load of ice, we pick up weight. And uh, as you pick up weight, angle of attack must go up. As you decrease weight, angle of attack goes down. The next one is very related to weight. It's load factor. Uh, load factor is the number of G's that you pull. So if you're pulling two G's, the wing is actually producing double the lift of the aircraft weight. So if the airplane weighs 2,000 pounds, but the wing is producing 4,000 pounds of lift, you would be under 2 G's of acceleration, and that would uh, increase load factor. So load factor goes up. As load factor goes up, angle of attack goes up. As load factor goes down, angle of attack goes down. So we increase load factor when we are in maneuvering flight. And the last one is just at this point a memory item for you. I'm not going to explain the details of it. I just want you to know it uh, for, for this, for, for the five factors that determine angle, angle of attack, is rate of roll. Uh, rate of roll is how fast the airplane is changing bank angle. And rate of roll will give you a differential angle of attack from wingtip to wingtip. And so this will come into play when we deal with the phenomenon of uh, spin. And that's when we'll get the detail of how and why that works. Uh, but all of these other factors, these factors, the first four, if you change the speed, you're going to change the angle of attack uniformly from wingtip to wingtip. Same with an air density change, same with the weight change, same with the load factor change. Uh, when you have a rate of roll, you will get a different angle of attack on each section of the wing from wingtip to wingtip. And more detail on that later, but that's enough for these factors of lift uh, for the moment.